Did this play really inspire Shakespeare's Hamlet? Good evening and welcome to day 25 of the 100 Days of Shakespeare event. I am super pleased to have you here. If you're here for the first time, hello. My name is Paul Adams from Small Crown Productions. And if you are returning, then welcome back. It's good to have you here. The 100 Days of Shakespeare event is... Um, too much to go into now. I've talked about it a few times. I will pop a link here to the first video that I did in this series so that you can go back and have a look at that and get the explanation of what it is. And then when you're done watching videos here on YouTube, in the link, the in the link, in the description of every video is a link to the Facebook group that has been set up to support this. So basically there's a whole bunch of people over there sharing a whole bunch of information and resources about Shakespeare, his life and his times. Oh, there I said it. I talked about it again. But anyway, so that's what the event is. At your own pace, research how you want. It's just about people celebrating the work, life, and times of Shakespeare. But tonight, what I want to do is have a look at one of his contemporaries' plays and, and dig into this because this is a groundbreaking play. This play is, is, well, it was one of the most performed plays of its day. It was one of the most popular plays of the time. And it was absolutely groundbreaking. This is The Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd. Now, Thomas Kidd was born in uh, 1558, six years before Shakespeare's birth. Um, and he wrote this. This was kind of the pinnacle of his writing work. Um, he died in 1594. So he died at 35. So he was quite young. Whereas Shakespeare went on to live until he was 52. So this play is considered groundbreaking because it is the very first revenge tragedy. So the very first play that had somebody go out and kill someone purely for revenge. And it's a tragedy, which means they also die. First one. How cool is that? Awesome. So... Let us have a look at the synopsis of this play. Now, the, the other thing that's really interesting about this play is it actually still harkens back to, to the plays that came before it. So it actually starts with the ghost of Andrea, who was a Spanish officer, and the personification of revenge entering the stage because Andrea has been killed in the Spanish onslaught of the Portuguese, which they won, but he was killed by Balthazar, the Viceroy's son from Portugal. And he wants revenge. He's not happy. He had a love at home, Bel Imperia, at home who he loved. And he's desperate to get revenge on, the, on his killer. So in the meantime, Horatio, Andrea's best friend, and Lorenzo, the nephew of the Spanish king, drag Balthazar into the Spanish court and essentially argue over who caught Balthazar. And it turns out through the play that we learn that it was actually Horatio and that Lorenzo essentially has been lying. So the king, not knowing really what the true story was, splits the goods between the two of them and on we go. Now, over the course of the next little bit, the Spanish king decides that it would actually be a really smart play to marry his daughter, Bella Imperia. Is that his daughter? Let me have to, have to check that. I didn't actually, hmm, I didn't pick up on that. But anyway, he thinks it would be uh, very smart to marry Bella Imperia, Bell Imperia, off to Balthazar to build the political ties between Portugal and Spain. But in the meantime, Bell Imperia has fallen in love with Horatio. So Horatio organizes to meet her and she sneaks out of the castle, imperial building, whatever the, I don't know, the hotel, whatever that, whatever they were living in. So she sneaks out to meet Horatio. Now, Lorenzo, nephew to the king, believes that something is afoot. And so he actually bribes her chambermaid and finds out that she snuck out. He and a couple of other guys get there first and they kill Horatio. They hang him and leave him hanging in the garden and they drag Bell Imperia off. Now they lock her up 
And her dad, Hieronimo, is trying to work out what's going on. She finally gets a letter snuck out to him, written in her own blood, that explains the situation and accuses Lorenzo of killing Horatio. So Horatio, sorry, Hieronimo decides that he is going to get revenge. Now, all the time, we've got the ghost of Andrea and the personification of revenge starting every scene of the play. And basically, Andrea going, I want my revenge. And revenge is going, just chill, dude. Just chill. Everyone will get their comeuppance. It's good. And it goes through the play. So, Hieronimo goes a little mad. (laughs) Basically, goes a little crazy. So there's a little bit of storyline that happens around there. But eventually gets himself pulled together and gets to a position where he can convince um, Bell Imperia, Lorenzo and Balthazar to perform a play to entertain the court. Now, what he does is swap out the fake daggers for real daggers so that in the story, when the characters played by uh, Lorenzo and Balthazar kill each other, they actually really kill each other. But what happens is Bell Imperia also, her character commits suicide in the play. And because the dagger was swapped out, she actually dies as well. Horatio, uh, Hieronimo admits to the Spanish king, or the duke, actually, uh, what happened and why he did what he did, bites out his own tongue so that he can't be tortured, kills the duke, and then stabs himself and dies. How's that for an ending? There you go. That's the show in a nutshell. It's obviously a lot longer than that. But there you go. So, a couple of things that we see here. We see the ghost starting the play. Sound a bit like Hamlet? Revenge. Sound a bit like Hamlet? Play within a play. Sound a bit like Hamlet? Not to mention Thomas Kidd having written, an early, or believed to have written, an early version of Hamlet himself before the Spanish tragedy. So, all of these pieces you can see taken out and we see them rewritten in Shakespeare's version of Hamlet and different versions of them appearing in other plays by other contemporaries. So the Spanish tragedy is said to have inspired not only Shakespeare, but Ben Jonson and Marlowe as well. And no doubt a whole bunch of other playwrights that we just don't know enough about because they just didn't make enough of a mark at the time. But the impact of this play was huge because of what it was. Super cool stuff. Really exciting. And the fact that we can still see this play, we can read this play, is awesome. So I definitely encourage you to track down a copy of it, have a read, and uh, hell, put a production of it on and uh, perform the very first revenge tragedy in English history. There you go. Uh, It would be great if you could give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, if you know somebody else that might find some value in this, share it with them, tag them in the comments, give it to them. Whatever you got to do, pay it forward. Let's help each other out. That's what we're all here for. Thanks very much. I will see you on the next one. Click one of these.